Welcome back to Bavarian RC. In this video I will show you how to build a DIY LiPo safe for charging your batteries. It can be used for single batteries or for parallel charging of two batteries. The inside of the box is covered with non-flammable gypsum fiberboard and has a ventilation duct to cool down and purge hot gases in case of a LiPo fire. But before starting the build, some warnings. Always follow the safety instructions of your batteries and chargers. Never leave your batteries unattended when charging. I am using this DIY LiPo safe myself. But if you decide building and using it, this is fully at your own risk. LiPo batteries are much more sensitive than other types of batteries. In case of technical failure or mistreatment, they can start burning with a violent chemical reaction. If you want to learn more about LiPo batteries, go and check out the links in the description below to some good websites providing valuable information and guidelines. The design of my LiPo safe is based on several ideas I found on the internet and YouTube, including some detailed solutions designed by myself. You will find the links in the description below. I will also put a link to the free plans, my STL files, and a material list in the description of the video. The dimensions of the Firmacell board found on my plans are fitting to the specific metal box I used and might need to be adjusted depending on the box you use. Even if you are using the same box, you might need to slightly adjust the dimensions, as the boxes have some tolerances. Also, the connector types might be different for your specific charger and batteries. The principle is to replicate the connectors inside the box. Now let's grab your box and get your build started. Take your Firmacell gypsum fiber board and mark the dimensions of the bottom plate. You might want to add about 1mm in each dimension, as the board will not snap off with a nice and clean edge. Cutting it a little bit bigger, you can rasp it down to get a clean edge. Use a large ruler and run a box cutter along the line about 4 or 5 times to score the board. Then turn the board and align the score line with the edge of your table. Give it a short shock to snap off the board at the score line. Do the same for the second cut. Take a rasper and work the edge of the bottom part straight and even. Test fit the bottom plate. Take the polyurethane glue and apply a bead to the underside of the bottom plate. You don't have to go crazy with the glue. It will just have to keep the part in its position. Also keep in mind that the polyurethane glue will expand while curing. Insert the bottom plate into the box. Put some weights on the bottom plate and let the glue cure. Let's move ahead and mark the width of the top plate. Make a score cut and break the board along the score line. Now mark the length of the top plate and make a score line. In case the remaining part is too small for breaking it over the edge of the table, you can use a pair of pliers to break the material piece by piece along the score line.
Finally, rasp the edges and make a test fit. Make sure that the lid is still closing and is not blocked by the top plate. If needed, make a chamfer at the edge that is on the side of the hinge, until the lid closes without interference. Apply glue to the back of the top plate. Position the box with the lid on the table and insert the top plate. Ensure that the box is still closing without interference. Again, put some weights on and let the glue cure. In the next step, we will need to measure the proper height of the side plate. With the lid closed, the side plate should be flush with the bottom and top plate. As this is difficult to measure with the lid closed, I do the following trick. I take a piece of foam board, put it vertically on the bottom plate, close to the rear end of the side plate and try to close the lid. If the lid is not completely closing, I trim off a small strip from the foam board. Then I try again. If it is still not closing completely, I again trim off a small strip of about 1 mm. Repeat this step until the lid is closing completely. Do the same process for the front end of the side plate. Now mark the length of the side plate. And then mark the height at the rear and front end using the two templates. Connect the two points and we are ready to cut the side plate. You know the game. Make a score line break the board, make the other score line and also break along this line. Clean the edges and make a test fit. Make sure that the lid is completely closing. Apply glue to the back of the part and position it inside the box. Make a last check to ensure that the lid is properly closing. Attach two clamps to press the side plate against the metal box and let the glue cure. For the front plate we will use the same method as for the side plate to determine the proper height by using foam board pieces which we cut step by step until the lid is properly closing. Transfer the height to the board using the foam board templates. Make a score line and break the board. After cleaning the edge, mark the length of the front plate and cut it. Give it a test fit inside the box. If everything is fine, mark the position of the cutout for the vent top plate. Make the score lines and use a pair of pliers to remove small pieces along the cutout. Trim the cutout to the correct size using the rasper. Apply glue to the back side and insert the plate. The clamps will hold it in position until the glue has fully cured. Now it's time to start the metalwork. In order to route the wires to the inside, we need to make some cutouts in the rear wall of the metal box. You can use the template from the plans and transfer the markings to the box. The size of the cutouts might need to be adapted to the size of the used grommets. They will be inserted to avoid chafing between the wires and the steel sheet. 
use a 2 mm drill to make holes around the circumference of the cutout. Removing the bridges between the holes is a bit time consuming. I first tried it with a small file. Later I used a cutoff wheel and this was definitely a lot easier. You will see in a moment. Once you can grab the metal piece with a pair of pliers, bend it up and down until the remaining bridges break. Clean the edges with a file. Do the same on the other side. This time I used the cutoff wheel to remove the bridges between the holes, which is a lot easier. Also the cleaning of the edges with a sanding band mounted on the Dremel is the right choice. For the remaining two holes start with a 3mm drill. Then use a cone drill or step drill to widen the holes to a diameter of 12mm. Deeper the holes. Now grab the grommets and insert them in the cutouts and bores. Print out the template for the vent holes and position it on the sidewall of the box. Start with a 2mm drill before increasing the diameter to 4mm. Then use the step drill to widen the bores to 8mm. Repeat this process for the remaining holes. Remove the template and deeper the bores. Yes, that looks good. I recommend putting some paint on the edges to avoid corrosion of the bare metal. I am using synthetic resin paint in RAL 3000 Red, which is almost the same color as the original box. Determine the correct height of the right side wall using the same method as before. Transfer the dimensions to the board and cut off the side plate. After cleaning the edges, trim the length to the correct size. Test fit the side plate inside the box. There should be a clearance of 60mm between the side plate and the front plate. Now make the small cutout at the upper corner where the vent top plate will be positioned. Apply glue and attach the side plate to the side wall of the box. Fix the clamps and let the glue cure. Mark the height of the vent side wall. Make the score line and snap off the part. Position the vent sidewall inside the box. It should be flush with the cutout at the upper corner. Mark the length of 100 mm measured from the metal box sidewall. Make the score line. To get a cleaner cut, you can also score it on the back side. Then snap off the piece. Keep the rest of the board as we will need it for the vent front wall. Again test fit the vent side wall and position the piece for the vent front wall at an angle of 90 degrees. Mark the length of the vent front wall at the edge of the side wall. 
and cut the piece at this line. Take the vent sidewall and apply glue to the front end facing the box sidewall and also to the front end facing the bottom plate. Insert the plate and make sure that everything is square. Let it cure overnight. In the next step we will build the rear plate. Measure the height of the right and left side plate, transfer it to the board and cut it at this position. Then mark the length of the rear plate and trim it to this size. Test fit the rear plate inside the box. Now we need to transfer the position of the cutouts and bores from the rear side of the box to the plate. First drill the holes for the charging wires with a diameter of 9 mm. At each end of the slot drill a hole with a diameter of 5 mm. Then make several bores along the slot. Tilt the drill left and right to open up the slot. Use a file to complete this step. Now mark the size of the grommets around the holes. Use a milling cutter to produce a cavity, large enough for the grommets. Test fit the plate to ensure a plain fit. If everything is ok, apply glue to the back of the plate and attach it. The clamps will hold it in position until the glue has fully cured. Now take the vent front wall. Check the fit before we go on. Print the template for the vent holes and attach it to the plate. Drill the holes with an 8mm drill. Apply glue to the area facing the vent side wall. The front end facing the bottom plate and the front end facing the front plate. Insert the plate and let the glue cure. For the next steps you will need a 3D printer. But don't worry if you don't have one. I will also show you an alternative made of plywood right after the installation of the 3D printed consoles. Now heat up your 3D printer and print the charging console. The link to the free STL files is in the description below. You will need to activate supports for this print. Use a pair of pliers to remove the supports before continuing. We will need two consoles. Four banana plugs, red and black, four banana checks, also red and black, and a silicone wire. Remove the insulation and tin the stranded wires. The silicone wires I am using here are quite oversized. 14 or 15 gauge wires will be fully enough. Apply solder to the inside of the plug and solder the wire to the plug. Do the same for the second plug. Screw on the plastic covers. Position the shrinking tube and shrink it. Then cut the wires to a length of 30 cm. Do the same for the second charging wire. Insert the wire through the round grommet. Be sure to have the other ends of the wires tinned before. Put on the nut and spacer. Check that you have the matching color for each wire fitting to the respective plug. Then solder the wire to the check. 
Repeat this step for the other check. Now thread the wires through the holes in the console and fix the checks. Apply a zip tie around the wires. This will act as a strain relief for the wires. Test fit the console and if you're happy with the fit, repeat the steps for the second console. After a final test fit, apply a good bead of hot glue to the mating surface of the console and press it against the rear wall. Hold it for about 30 to 45 seconds until the glue has cooled down. Then do the same for the second console. The settings for the 3D printing of the balancer console are the same as for the charging console. Remove the supports. You will need two balancer consoles and two balancer adapter wires. Route the wire to the inside of the box with the EH plug on the inside. Insert the EH plug into the slot of the balancer console. This is a tight fit and you may need a barbecue skewer to press it fully in its position. It should be flush with the protruding part of the console. Fix the plug in its position using CA glue. Then do the same for the second console. Test fit the balancer console and if you're happy with the fit, apply a bead of hot glue to the mating surface of the console and press it against the rear wall. Hold it for about 30 to 45 seconds until the glue has cooled down. Then do the same for the second console. As promised before, I will now show you an alternative build for the consoles in case you don't have a 3D printer. First cut all the pieces from 4mm plywood. Check the link below for the free plans. Take the top plate and the front plate. Lay the top plate flat on the table and rotate the front plate 90 degrees up. The front plate should be located beside the top plate. You can use a roll of tape to ensure the front plate is at a 90 degree angle. Then apply CA glue. I recommend going in steps to ensure proper alignment of the two parts. Now put the part on the table with the front plate facing down. Put the bottom plate on top of the front plate and again align it at a 90 degree angle. Apply CA glue like we did before. Grab the two small support pieces, which will give enough surface to properly glue the balancer connector in a later step. Align the support at the lower edge of the rectangular cutout. Then apply CA glue. Do the same for the second support. That completes the build of the plywood console, which you can use as an alternative for the 3D printed parts. The installation of the connectors is pretty much the same as shown before with the 3D printed parts. This console is replacing the four separate 3D printed consoles and goes in the same location as the 3D printed ones. In the next step, we will build the vent top plate. Measure the size of the part in order to fully cover the vent duct. Transfer the measures to a piece of board and cut it accordingly. Do a test fit of the vent top plate. 
It should have a flat fit against the metal walls of the box and be flush with the outer shape of the vent duct. To prevent as much as possible the escape of smoke in case of a LiPo fire, we will install a filter in front of the outer vent hole. I am using a non-flammable cut to size range hood filter. This one is a fleece filter with a thickness of about 10 mm. Measure the needed size of the filter. It should have the same size as the cross section of the vent duct. Cut the filter and install it in front of the vent holes. To cool down the hot gases on their way out, we will fill the vent duct with steel scrubbing pads. Fill the duct with the pads. To attach the vent top plate, we will 3D print two mounting brackets. I will show you later an alternative made from plywood, in case you don't have a 3D printer. But let's first go for the 3D printed ones. Test fit the brackets on the inner side of the vent duct. If the fit is ok, go ahead and apply a good bead of hot glue to the bracket. The bracket should be flush with the upper edge of the side wall and centered inside the vent duct. Do the same for the second bracket. As an alternative for the 3D printed brackets, you can also build them from plywood. First cut out the parts for the two brackets from 4mm plywood. Check the link below for the free plans. Put the side plate flat on the table, rotate the top plate 90 degrees up and position it beside the side plate. Then apply CA glue. Do the same for the second bracket. The installation inside the vent duct is the same as for the 3D printed brackets. Transfer the position of the bores to the vent top plate. Drill the four holes starting with a 2mm drill and then in a second step with a 4mm drill. To attach the vent top plate we will use gypsum fiber board screws with a size of 3.9 by 19 mm. Countersink the bores so that the screw head is flush with the top surface of the plate. Attach the vent top plate to the vent duct using four screws. To avoid hot gases exiting through the gap between the lid and the box, we will install a heat gasket. As the gap is quite small, the gasket shouldn't be thicker than 3mm. The one I'm using is a 3 by 10 mm flat type. Measure the length and width of the channel on each side and cut the gaskets accordingly. Apply double sided tape to the gasket. and attach it to the channel around the top plate. Repeat this step for all four gaskets. In the next step I am painting the lid of the box. This is fully optional. In my case I decided to put my logo and some text on the lid. Before painting I recommend using Scotch-Brite to prepare the surface. In the first step use a synthetic resin spray paint in RAL 3000 red. It is slightly darker than the red of the original box. But as we are painting the complete lid the difference isn't really noticeable. Apply several very thin layers of paint until the white elements are no longer visible. Then let the paint dry for at least 24 hours. The longer the better. I used my 3D printer to create a stencil for spraying my logo and the liposafe text onto the lid. The link to the STL file for the text is in the description below. That completes the build of the liposafe. Let's connect the LiPo safe to your charger. First hook up the charging wire. 
Then connect the balancer cable to the 6S connector of the balancer board. Then connect the balancer board inside the box to the balancer console. And the charging wire to the charging console. Now we have replicated all connections of the charger inside the box. Connect the balancer plug of the battery to the balancer board. And the charging wire to the power connector of the battery. Close and secure the lid. Make your charging settings on the charger and you're ready to charge. If you have two chargers, you can also hook up two batteries to the LiPo safe and charge them in parallel. I have never tested the LiPo safe with a real LiPo fire. But as it is based on several proven designs, I am fully confident in its reliability. Nevertheless, always remember when building and using your own LiPo safe, this is fully at your own risk. Thanks for watching Bavarian RC.